is everybody doing? We're back at it. <coughs> the weekly Wednesday live Q&A. I am Juha Ruokangas, your humble servant on a mission from the gods of electric guitar. Whoever, wherever they may be. We have here quite a few followers already. Viewers, great, 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 great. Now, we have a lot of ground to cover today, so let's just dive in right away. Now, it's, you know, fair to say that we live the golden age, the renaissance of guitar gear, you know. We have the cheap gear, more costly gear, we have the bargains, the high-end, the boutique, the factory-made, robot-made, handmade, custom-made, sustainably built, you know, local wood, reclaimed wood, composite, new age, vintage, with headstock, without headstock, solid, chambered, skeleton, semi-hollow, acoustic, you name it. You know, everything is available to us at a flick of a thumb. And today we're going to focus to one common scenario of acquiring guitars that gets discussed a lot on the guitar forums such as the gear page and others. So let's talk about ordering a custom guitar. And even more specifically, let's look at the common reasons and situations when it might not be a wise I'd order in the first place at all. Great. Janne, Greg, Damien, Antti, Vincent, hello. Hi guys. To the rest of you who haven't commented yet, Nice to have you here. Um, yeah, first, before we go to those five provocatively titled uh, reasons why not to order a custom guitar, let's define what does it mean to order a custom guitar. So, you know, we're talking here about a situation where you place an order to a luthier, to a company, big or small, so that they would then, or he, she, would make a guitar for you. You cannot purchase the guitar because it isn't made yet. It doesn't exist yet. So we're not talking about a Fender Custom Shop Stratocaster here that you can buy from a regular guitar store, web shop, reverb, wherever. We're not talking about a luthier-made guitar that is available at the dealer's website or their own website, wherever. We're discussing the custom-made guitar now, the one you need to wait you know, one defining element when ordering a custom guitar is that you need to somehow first come to an agreement with the builder what kind your custom guitar will be. Then you'll typically get an offer from that luthier company, their dealer agent, and after you've accepted the offer, typically you would pay some kind of a chunk of money as a deposit to confirm the order. And then you wait. You wait until the builder makes you the guitar. <laughs> that's the <laughs> that's the kind of gist of it. So that roughly explained can differ from company to company, luthier to luthier. But anyways, you get a gist of what we're focusing at. We're focusing at that custom-made instrument that you kind of make the order, you wait, it's being built, you get it one day. So here we go. Five reasons why not to make the order. First off, the most obvious argument, in my opinion, to skip ordering is forgeries. So product forgery, what does that mean? It's a typically, uh, you know, it's, it's a copy of a name brand product, not made by the owner of the brand, the owner of that trademark, but someone else. A copy, a replica. Okay, a copy or replica isn't necessarily an illegal forgery. It becomes an ille illegal product forgery when it is made in, in, an, in the attempt to pass as the original. Like a typical example, your, your local luthier makes you a custom guitar in the form of a replica of a 1956 Fender Stratocaster. And to top it off, he glues a Fender logo to the headstock. That's a forgery. You can find these forgeries very cheap, very poorly made, made in 
Asia, typically China, but there are luthiers who live off making this stuff, you know, for top dollar too. So there, there are even some that have gotten caught. They have faced the consequences. They've been prosecuted. They, you know, they pay for it. It is illegal to make and sell product forgeries. Now, okay, I get it. It may feel like a great idea to order that handmade, you know, hard to hear me? Really? <coughs> Somebody says it's hard to hear me. Wow, why is that? My microphone says everything is fine. Can anybody else comment also what's happening? So we would uh, hard to hear me, hard to hear me. And you, Norton five nine nine six, do you have your volume up in your device the way you're listening at? I hope the tech tech everything is fine in my end. So otherwise, I have really no idea how I can make it better. If I tap the microphone, yeah, it's it's all all looks as it should be. Can you guys hear me? Okay, Vincent says he can hear me well. Okay, okay, okay. It's all fine. Okay, it's all fine. Norton five nine nine six six. You need to look into your at to your end to your your stuff. Okay, cool. Let's carry on. You know. So, we continue. Okay, everybody's hearing well. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, great. So. You know, okay, going back, it's it might be a great idea, it might feel like a great idea to order that handmade, that better made telly Les Paul from your local luthier. And it might be a fun challenge for the luthier to do his best replicating the original complete with the logo and all, like as a challenge. But, hey, come on, isn't, isn't that a bit lame, like... I wouldn't like to use the word pathetic, but, you know, legal or illegal put aside. I'm absolutely certain that the luthier would feel so much happier if you would ask him, you know, at the very least to put his own logo or his name to the headstock. He would love that. You know, by that small gesture, abracadabra, the guitar is not an illegal forger anymore either. So... You know, it may still violate the trademark of a name brand, like a headstock shape or something like that, especially with the, with the biggest brands. But at least it's not any more a guitar that can pass as an original when it changes owner in the future. So you're not fooling anybody, you know. And better yet, if it is a Fender Stratocaster, you really, you know, deep inside, um, if that's what you want, then why not buy a Fender Stratocaster? You know. The original Fender Stratocaster, if that's what you want. So on a more general note, the Strat, Tele, Les Paul, Jazz Bass, Precision Bass, these words, it is clear that these instruments have become more than those trade names that those specific brands own. They have become a gen you know they have become generic terms for a style of instruments, you know whether we like it or not, whether we feel it's fair or not, that's the way it is. Nevertheless, you know this phenomenon, when a trademark or brand name that, you know because of its popularity, significance, becomes the generic term for, you know a general class of product or service, it's called, genericization. Difficult word, generalization, and it usually happens against the intentions of the trademark's owner, but it does happen. Aspirin would be one example of such, you know, you could call it er erosion of a trade name. 
let's call it the le legal term. So sometimes a brand names, you know, it might become generic verbs like Googling. Googling meaning that you are use searching something from the search engine named Google. But people use the Google in a, in a more general. Or Photoshopping would be another, you know, Photoshopping. People talk about Photoshopping regardless of what uh, piece of software they're using. So th this has happened to some extent to many guitar names. But it doesn't mean you can still print Fender to your guitar headstock or write you can't write Stratocaster up there either, Telecaster, West Paul. So this all said, you know, if you're after a custom guitar inspired by the classics, you know, there are tons of much cooler ways, cooler options than that replica. Than or and especially trying to fool others or fool yourself, you know, with a with a product forgery. So there you go. That was the first scenario when you don't buy I'm advising you to not buy a custom guitar so we're moving on we're more moving on to the second reason to not order a custom guitar let's call this in quotes the bargain of a lifetime this scenario so you know a luthier professional hobby builder whoever makes you an unbelievably tempting offer for you know making a custom guitar to you to your you know to your very own specifications you know, he promises you a high end custom guitar that will be cheaper than others and on top of that he'll promise to make it fast and this all sounds of course fantastic like un unreal now are you smelling a rat no maybe you should cuz you know, let me show you something. This is common knowledge. I'll show you something. Have you ever seen that before? This is often referred to as the Iron Triangle. More specifically, a project management triangle. It says pick two. Why? Because all three you cannot have. You know, a high quality custom guitar for low cost under certain circumstances it can happen but you can bet that it has to be thrown to the bottom of the barrel on the priorities of the maker you know how about a cheap custom instrument made quickly well there goes high quality out the window high end custom guitar made fast possible but it won't be cheap if you're cutting through the queues you know you, you you'd be the first in the queue you know or you know if if somebody offers you with this unbelievable deal and you smell the rat there's something fishy there so you know these these days these times we live remembering the golden age of guitar gear we live in you know there are all kinds of operations around the world offering custom guitars there are newbies there are more experienced ones big small cheaper more costly so this triangle i showed you that should be used as a you know as a as a rough reference to remind you that often if not always the bargain, excuse me, bargain of a lifetime, in fact, can be more like this. Something you don't need at a price you cannot resist. Could be happening. Not necessarily, but it's good to be aware of that possibility and not to just jump in <laughs> okay <laughs> that was easy right so next let's see the third reason to skip ordering a custom guitar this is a tough one to explain but I'll try I do my best so now if you're ordering a, a custom guitar with the pr 
primary intention, remember, primary intention to sell the guitar for work, you're most likely going to be disappointed. And now why is that? Well, when ordering a custom guitar from a luthier, does everybody know what luthier means? Does it where it comes from? Lute maker, musical instrument maker, origin of the word, guitar maker. Violin makers, for some reason, are also luthiers. <laughs> In case somebody didn't know. Yeah, well, anyway, ordering a custom guitar from a luthier, you know, picking the specifications you want, closing the deal with you, and then later down the road, you receive the guitar. In our case, if, if we would be making this guitar, this could be like seven to nine months from order confirmations. If all goes well, if, if there's no obstacles on the way, like something like a you know, bad piece of wood that we find out, some, you know, s things can happen sometimes. And anyways, the time can differ a lot from Luthier to another, company to another. But anyways, you've ordered that guitar, for your specifications, somewhere down the road, you get get it. It's delivered to you, or you pick it up from the guy, from the company, from the dealer, from the agent, wherever. You know, and the color, the neck profile, pickups, frets, wiring. You know, maybe custom inlays, whatnot. It is a custom guitar made for you. But when you sell this guitar to someone, it isn't a custom guitar for him, for the next owner. You know, for the next buyer, it is simply a used guitar. So he values it differently than you did when you ordered it. So if your primary interest is to invest into a custom guitar with the intention to sell it and make profit, you will in most cases be disappointed. You know, predicting the value development you know, the future value of any given contemporary item, be it in this case a luthier built or we're going to use a fancy word called micro brand, a micro brand guitar. You know, luthiers, they, they are brands, they have brands. Um, when they're small, we can call them micro brands. Sounds fancy, but I think it's okay. So, you know, the v it's not easy to evaluate these guitars, the contemporary, the future development of a contemporary item like that. The value of a handmade guitar, you know, it typically it evolves over long periods of time. And so if you bought a guitar from us, for example, two years ago, it is completely unrealistic to expect that you would now get the money back that you paid for the guitar. You know, when, when, when the brand, for example, okay, I will use us again. When, when we are an established brand who's been around for 25 years, you can expect realistically that the value won't drop like crazy, but it will drop. Uh, you know, on short term notice like that. On the other hand, a player who fell in love with my guitar 25 years ago when I was a rookie, nobody knew who, who this was, and our and this re reflected in the price level of our guitars. And it was a really small beginning, you know, learning process. Somebody bought that guitar 25 years ago, has enjoyed the instrument all these years, and now has retired from playing and decides to sell the guitar. Now this guitar owner might as well be happily surprised on the long-term value development of the guitar. No, he might get quite a bit more for it now than he paid 25 years ago. But, you know, sometimes I'm asked, like, if I order, somebody asked me, if, you, if, if I order your guitar now, what can I expect getting for it in 10 years or something like that? So my answer would go typically somehow like, you know, well, that future development it depends greatly on how I succeed running my business during the next 10 years. You know, how our brand value develops. And typically, <laughs> especially with micro brands like this, 
really small operations. You know, the work, it it's follows the same principles, the same sort of logistics as when an artist becomes the most, most sought after, you know, when, when, when the new art is not available anymore. In other words, the, the quicker I die, <laughs> you know, the, the, the maybe the better short-term, you know, value development. But I'd appreciate sticking around for more than 10 years, you know, if you don't mind. <laughs> so, you know, um, and I usually close my statement as recommending this person not to order a guitar from me but with this intention. So I fear he will be disappointed, you know. Um, I'm getting there a couple questions. Let's see, Jan asks, has anyone ever approached me with a creation made with a guitar creator? Okay, he's referring to our guitar configurator tool that is on our, on our website, on uh, available as an app. N okay, so creation made with a guitar creator, that was just made you think that's just atrocious. I think, yeah, sometimes, so, you know, it's normal. I, I get it. And, and for, I understand that, that our guitars, the, the price level that, the, that these days the, the our guitars go for and, and, and have, to be, have to be asked for to, to keep the wheels running the way we are keeping them running. It's not making us rich, but it's keeping the wheels turning, you know. For some people, it's it's so much money that it's it's just ridiculous. But but that's a that's another discussion, another episode. There is even I made a a long vi a video a long time ago, you know, about prices. Um, maybe if somebody finds that and puts it to the chat, the, the link to that price video, it, it's called something something. Why does a guitar cost what it what it costs or something like that? Um, so anyway, um, uh, Kiesel makes atrocities all the time. Okay, not going to discuss Kiesel here. Sorry, <laughs> let's keep keep this uh, keep in the topic. Okay, um, you know, a long time ago, when the movement of handmade guitar was young. You know, there it is a very fascinating history to this. How handmade guitars, maybe first it was, uh, you know, acoustic guitars, acoustic flat top guitars, and dreadnoughts and whatnot, and then, then you know, and R stop guitars. How the kind of luthier movement started back in the in the late '60s, early '70s. Um, you know, you could buy wonderful guitars from luthiers for much cheaper than the actual market value of those guitars was at the time. So essentially you could buy a handmade acoustic guitar from certain builders, an up and coming luthier at from that time and sell it immediately after purchasing it, for, you know, you and you could sell it, you could make money, you could ma sell it for significantly more money than, than what you paid for. And, and this was because the luthier business was new. It it was a it was an underground, isolated, you know, you know, bunch of hippies. The North American uh, luthier movement. There's a there's a great book about it by Catherine Dudley. What is the name of that book? I will show you that book some other time. Remind me about it. Remind me about it. Um, Anyways, you know, so often the luthiers didn't know what they should have charged. You know, the whole business model, or more accurately, the, the lifestyle was just forming. You know, the, the, the humble hippie type making the ends meet just about artists, living the artist life, you know. And, and it's the same phenomenon as with any artist who has been doing his or her thing in, in good faith and then taking advantage back in the day by their agents, managers, etc. You know, these days everything is a bit more transparent and there are good schools, books, other information available. So professional luthier can be 
at least in theory, uh, contemporary luthier, professional luthier, does his homework, can be better informed. And, you know, the, the luthier business, we, you know, we have established, we have established, we have claimed our space, so to speak, the, the righteousness of our existence. So at least in theory, we have the tools how to evaluate our work, work value more fairly to the market and to, to the well-being of ourselves. So, yeah. So that's that. Moving on. We're moving on to the, to the fourth reason to avoid ordering a custom guitar. And this one is pretty easy. And so if you're in a rush, if you're in a rush, don't do it. You know, it's very simple. That's okay. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll take, I take this partly back. For some of you, I know there, there are those of you there, who, you know, ordering a custom guitar on a whim, following an impulse, you know, sending the deposit done. For some of you guys, it works. You, you know what you're doing. It's all good. But most often, if you're in a rush, better to take a deep breath and sleep over it. You know. Remember, the, the making of your custom guitar will take a long time. You know, you won't get it very quick. Or if you do that, you know, it's a bit suspicious, isn't it? If it comes like the next week or something. And if you're impatiently waiting from the day one on, this long process might make you unhappy. And it might reflect to the luthier's work too. I'll mention another type of, of, of rushing that should be even more alarming to you though. You know, now if, if the company or the luthier you're buying from, if the selling side is impatient in closing the deal, tries to rush you into giving those credit card numbers or <laughs> keep sending PayPal requests, whatever, better to back off. Just doesn't sound right. You know, remember you, as the customer, you have the right to feel confident and relaxed about how the, how the process goes, how the order is done. And if you don't feel comfortable, it's usually a sign. It's always a sign of something. You know, it can be a sign that there's something fishy with the company you're dealing with. Or it can be a sign that you are simply not sure if this is what you want to do. You know. And, you know, ordering in a rush, you know, if it goes to cancelling because of that, you know, sometimes life happens, of course. Like, you lose a job, things happen, you have to cancel, or it's, it's fine, it's, order, it's, it's part of life. And it's, I'm, I'm not putting any guilt there, but when canceling a, a custom order happens because of rush, you know, rushing in an order, it's never a nice situation for, for either of the parties, you know, not for the buyer, not for the seller. So, you know, yeah. Um, Norton asks, what is our current wait time, roughly? I think I mentioned it there, but it, it's, it's for our guitars, it's currently, depending on the guitar, seven to nine months thereabouts if all goes well sometimes it's a bit longer but we try to keep it somewhere in that neighborhood currently if we get more orders then it, you know it, it gets longer because we can't rush we can't make more of them we're working at the capacity we can make so and our in our, our company we we are very inefficient shop because we don't do serial work so we have only luthiers here so who make guitars from the beginning to the end so which partly explains the price level and so on so it, it, you know we're not the most efficient shop we're not the fastest you know we're not the most high tech we're pretty low tech um, so we're using more time than maybe average modern contemporary guitar maker would use but okay this was not about our guitars um, on general level, 
I wouldn't know. The the waiting times can can they can be very very different. There are builders one man shops where where the waiting time can be five years. It could be ten years. You know, so it's very very different. It's very different. So we're five people at m our shop, so we can we can work a bit faster in that in that way faster. Okay, um, people, we are getting there. Last but def definitely not least, and definitely not the, the most simple reason, the fifth reason, the fifth element. <laughs> you know, why not to order a custom guitar? Why to skip the order? Now, this one, this is the one ring to rule them all. This is kind of where all the four reasons mentioned earlier, they tie together. This is the one that I see most often debated, argued about on the forums, such as the gear page, the small comp company luthier section, the threads there and elsewhere on, on Facebook groups and stuff. So at simultaneously, it's a paradox because it's a direct result the fact that we live in this golden age of handmade guitar you know because never before has there been so many options for a guitar player to have a custom guitar made never before in the history you know it's it's not so easy for me to put this one into one single catchphrase but let's call the fifth element the fifth reason why not to order a custom guitar as the situation where you don't quite know what you're getting into. I'll repeat that. You quite don't know what you're getting into. <coughs> what does this mean? Well let, let me try let me try to elaborate on this. So when I began making guitars for my living in the mid nineteen nineties, the, the the term boutique guitar you know, it didn't, it didn't really exist yet. There were a good number of professional guitar makers, you know, scattered around, scattered around the world, but things were more isolated, more national, more local than international. Well, those who were international was a very small bunch compared to today, what, what, what the situation is today. So you could say that the rise of the boutique guitar phenomenon, as we know it today, you know, that has evolved hand in hand with with the evolution, the the rise of the internet, the revolution of social media. You know, discussion forums being one of the early manifestations of a social media. You know, this was probably the biggest single contributor how it all came together, how the boutique guitar scene came together. From that isolated, you know, oddball profession of being a guitar maker back in the day, this job, this career as a guitar maker has become a trend of a sort. And it has become a, a, a trend of a magnitude that is sometimes difficult for me to fully grasp, to fully understand. You know, think about it. In, in Finland, in Finland, we have over 100 companies repairing and making guitars. We have a hobby builders Facebook group with 3,000 members in it. In Finland, a small country with a population of 5.5 million. <laughs> Internationally speaking, there are thousands, thousands of luthiers or these micro brands trying to make their living you know and on top of that there are tens of thousands of hobby builders out of which some have fancier websites than mo you know most of the pro builders they look pro but they're hobby you know there's a difference there's a distinct difference in that in many ways you know and, and pros and hobby builders, everybody alike, have access to modern technology, CNC and others. You know, and, and while there's nothing wrong with that, it has very much changed the dynamics, changed the 
change the approach of what does it mean to be a guitar maker? What does it mean to be, you know, live as a guitar maker and, and, and know your, your craft inside out? It has changed. On, and on top of that, on top of that all, those thousands of pros, tens of thousands of hobby builders, everyone, on top of that, there are factories in the USA and other countries that are, you know, they're dedicated to spill out Strat and Tele style bodies and necks for the needs of <laughs> luthiers who then stick their logo to the headstock, assemble the guitar and sell it to you as a handmade custom guitar. Now, some makers are more open about how their guitars are made, but, but others keep it in secrecy if they can. So, so not all luthier-built guitars are what they appear to be. And, and this doesn't necessarily correlate like cheap guitar would be, you know, essentially a parts caster with a cool logo in it. You know, some of the more expensive um, luthier-built handmade guitars are like this too. You know, and in, a, in addition to that, in addition to all of that, nowadays, it is also possible to become your own guitar brand. <laughs> so if you have a name, you have a following, say, in YouTube, maybe as a guitar player, perhaps as a guitar enthusiast, collector, you know, you can start your own brand. There are factories around the world, mostly in Asia, maybe elsewhere, I, I have no clue, with a lot of surplus capacity and they're very happy to sub subcontract, you know, custom guitars, okay, custom guitars to your new guitar brand. <laughs> no. So, you know, a conclusion to all this, today, Essentially, everybody have the, the basic access, I repeat that, the basic access to this mystic knowledge of how to make a guitar. This knowledge that used to be sacred, used to be hidden, only to be revealed, you know, to those who dare to jump in <laughs> to the fires, you know, of the purgatory, to those who sacrificed, sacrificed their lives often their, their wives or their families, their souls to this noble craft. You know? Um, so everybody has, has access. And as it has happened to many other branches of businesses in the modern world, when everybody have the access, when everybody can be a guitar maker, it becomes a wild west. You know, there's absolutely no rules. Poo Ninja is a say asking something. Let me take this. Please tell me nobody's selling 80 euro kits cleaned up as a handmade custom. I have no idea, but there are better kits than 80, 80 euro kits, you know. So, I mean, I, I just, this was not meant as a, um, let me actually, let, let me make this one thing absolutely clear now, you know. Please don't take this, my, my talk, don't take it as a rant of how much better things used to be back in the old times. Because this is, <laughs> that's, not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm only describing the current reality in the most truthful way I can, I, I can think of. It is, of course, it's my perspective, my take on what's going on. And you have a right to disagree as much as you want. I don't see Poo Ninja dis this is not why I'm telling this. I'm, I'm taking it t just to kind of make clear. So, you know, I won't take it personally when you disagree. And please don't take my talk personally either, in case you find yourself becoming very emotional or what you hear me talk about here. So I just wanted to say that. And I'm not, my point is not to criticize 
any specific way of making a guitar, whether it's a parts cast or what is wh what it, whatever it is. I'm just bringing forth what I know as a, one of the insiders of the business since 25 years. So you know, I I've been around for for a long time in the business. I know a lot of people in the big companies, in smaller companies, and you know, colleagues, uh, dealers, you know, from factories. So I know there's a lot of it's everything is not exactly as it looks like it doesn't necessarily make everything bad but it's just for you to understand that you know let's rewind now back to my fifth thesis my fifth element isn't it quite natural that in this wild west of guitar making where you can't really know what is real what is i hate to use the the word fake news let's not let's let's erase that away from there let's not talk about that you know that stupid word you don't know what is true what is a lie you know so isn't it very easy to feel you don't quite know what you're getting into remember that was my fifth reason when it's a good idea sometimes not to order not to make that order isn't it easy to feel you don't quite know what you're getting into? How could you even know? If you think of it. You know. An example. I've seen a thread on a forum I follow. Now this is... Okay. I'll take it back. It's an imaginary example. I haven't seen this thread, but I've seen similar threads. Now this is my imaginary thread on a forum I follow from time to time, I've seen a thread, I'm a guitar player, I've seen a thread about a new builder that everybody seems to be raving about. There's a big hype about this builder. Now, hardly anybody, maybe nobody has those guitars, but they seem very desirable. And, I, and I'm feeling that irresistible pull, the, the, the gas, the guitar acquisition syndrome. <laughs> I'm falling in love with that guitar, it's a cool design, there's there's this fascinating story about the wood this builder uses and, and whatnot. But I hesitate because nobody owns those guitars. There's no shop address on the builder website. There's just a telephone. There's an email address. It's a very common scenario today when you look at builders' um, websites. Okay, I Google the guy. I can't find almost anything. So, still no sign of somebody owning such a guitar. There's no reviews. Now, should I take the leap of faith? No. Because if I would, I could be one of the first ones owning this sexy guitar. You know, just like that guy 25 years ago took that leap of faith with me, bought that one of the first guitars and made a great deal. <laughs> I hope make it <laughs> a great deal. Um... Okay, let's go back to our imaginary, imaginary little theory. I could be one of the first ones. Okay, the guitar is rather on the expensive side, yes, but a future collectible, no less. <laughs> they all keep saying that on the thread, on that forum. But how can I be sure? How can I be sure? I feel I don't quite know what I'm getting into. Again, the fifth. I don't know what I'm getting into, but I'm so tempted, you know? I'm so tempted. So what can you do in such a situation? How to be sure? I mean, you do want to be sure before <laughs> sending your hard-earned uh, hard -earned cash, hard-earned money to someone, right? You know, in, in, in this particular example, it's quite straightforward. Since there's no track record of this builder anywhere, it means either that he hasn't been around for long like like me 25 years ago or okay then there was there was no threads there was no social media there was not, none of this happening everybody was isolated so you kind of needed to the first guitars i sold i sold face to face to people because he couldn't do what, what, what people are doing these days you know you could only sell to somebody you didn't know after you had really established to some extent but nowadays it's it's not necessary 
you can make you can make things look very pretty <laughs> on the outside okay no track record of this builder it means either he hasn't been around for long or maybe he hasn't done very well if he has been around for long you know nothing to judge but it does mean that you need to contact him directly you know because these days that's one of the problems is that that we don't even co contact necessarily each other directly we don't we don't pick up the phone we send an email and hope for the best and in emails sms's messages you don't get all the information you don't get the emotional information the body language all that stuff that is missing you know so the first contact if if you have no other trustworthy reference you know you need to contact the guy so he can give you references it's okay to ask that guy phone numbers or emails from people who own those guitars or ask him directly I can't find information of people who own those guitars so how many have you built or something like that people who can tell you about their experience you know with the builder you need to contact these people you need to find them <laughs> you know I am I'm really I'm, I'm personally aware of, of I'd like to say luthiers because they, they're, they're not pros they're, they're hobby builders who have really fancy looking website and pro sounding texts the copy on their website maybe nicked from some other builders website maybe not but in any case you know it looks really good the guitars look great they are either good or they're photoshopped great but in reality I have found out in one case or, or two cases or something you know that this brand is a person who has built two or three instruments in his whole life <laughs> or has had a friend build him two or three instruments in his whole life you know things aren't always what they seem um, yeah so Poonin just says here summarizing up very nicely what I've been talking about you know it seems before ordering a custom built instrument you really have to have a good understanding of what exactly you want and why yeah and even then <laughs> you can't always know you know nothing is certain in this world I guess so my conclusion people always 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 check the track record of the builder of the company you're about to order a guitar from always this applies to well-established builders really seriously to experienced builders to larger workshops you know it's always a good idea to check for references and especially check for fresh refer references not from five years ago you want references from the this year what's happening now in that shop these days it's easy to do a little sweep online and it's remember it's it's really always okay to ask references from a builder directly not many people do that but those few times somebody has asked from me I feel honored I feel really that wow this guy is taking it seriously and I respect that you know you know in case you feel uncertain which way to turn ask for references and talk to the people that own those guitars you know if you cannot be sure what's going on back off don't order that guitar it will most likely save you from a lot of trouble or if you're the type who likes to gamble <laughs> then why not 
sure, order the guitar, take the risk, take the plunge, but remember that you decided to go for it. You decided, you yourself, you decided to go for it, regardless of the uncertainty that you sensed. And whichever way your gamble ended, it is very helpful to your peers if you then share your experience with a community of, of guitar enthusiasts on the, on the forums, on, on Facebook, wherever. You know, transparency, you know, dignity, decency, honesty, those are the values with the real power in our very uncertain, our very confusing times. Transparency, dignity, decency, honesty. Yeah. Thank you. I got a very nice comment. I'm not going to bring it on there. You can read it from the chat if you want. Vincent, thank you very much. Vincent, thank you. Um, I appreciate. So, you know, making guitars in a small company, often a one man or woman show, it's very special. It's very special work. It's it's a it's a lifestyle. It's a it's a life long career. You know, working with wood materials that can that can bring about surprises along the way. And when when a maker has a you know a good reputation, and he's he's been around, she's been around for for a long t longer time, experienced with good reputation, good ra track record. You know, this builder typically has a long queue of orders. And, you know, and this means that the estimated schedules aren't always met because things can happen. It's a small operation. Things can happen in your life that change plans. And this is all perfectly natural. It's not like you're being scammed or, you know, it's a fraud when somebody doesn't deliver you on, you know, on, on October 2021, if that's what that person has promised. But... But even with that, with the delivery times and things like this, it is really good to good idea to to check the track record and and discuss with the builder. You know, if there is some uncertainty about it, discuss with the builder really openly about it. That I have this concern that what if? How is it usually in your your and and in your business with the schedules? Do you meet the deadlines? You know. Please tell me because I would rather hear the, the truth from you now than, than be disappointed later. And you know, direct communication. You know. And if if a guitar is a bit late, you know, better you get a premium instrument a bit late from you know from from the original schedule than a rushed through piece <laughs> with issues in it, <laughs> right? You know, communication is really, it's the key here. And when feeling confident, you know, when trusting the maker, there are so many fantastic makers out there. It's unbelievable. I have the, you know, I have the privilege, I, I feel really gifted of belonging into this wonderful community of, of, of builders through the European Guitar Builders Association and through, you know, our my peers, my friends, my colleagues in the in the North America, in, 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 in Asia, in, in different parts of the world, everywhere around the world. I know a lot of people through my role as a, you know, uh, one of the founders of the, the European Bit G Guitar Builders Association. And, you know, there are so many fantastic makers and they're good people. They're, they're I would say they're, they're really good people. And you know, it's it's overwhelming and wonderful. And so, yeah, when, when planned well, when communicated well, you know, the journey of having a custom instrument made for you, you know, for your very own specifications, it, it can be a trip of a lifetime. 
a trip of a lifetime. So, so thumbs for that. You know, it's not all gr grim <laughs> and negative. You know, it's not all grim and negative. Yeah. We're getting to the end of this. I can't believe it. It's it's ten o'clock and I'm I'm in schedule. This is probably the first time in history, maybe the second time in history. Um, let me bring on one more comment. Lucky links. Luthiers who take responsibility won't start working on a project before they know it's what the customer wants and not what they think they want. Amen. <laughs> That's right. You know, we have, we do have a code of conduct. A lot of us have that. We, 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 yeah. So. I will talk to you, talk to you about that in another episode. Hmm. Yes, I have something in mind. Let me write this down. Sorry. Just got a great idea. So, but I can't spill the beans because I have to talk to someone first before I can talk about this. So, people, that's it. Folks, now you know. And hey, if if none of these five reasons why not to buy a custom guitar seemed to apply to you my sincere request for you is to follow adamantly mr albert einstein's <laughs> scientific argumentation and advice on this very topic let me show you what i'm talking about <laughs> you know hats off to Albert Einstein so guys stay safe you know and um, what's happening here stay safe stay safe you know take care of your loved ones and if you know someone who might find this video helpful, please share. Or if you see a thread on guitar forums where the followers could you know, benefit watching this, feel free to embed the video there too. And um, you know, take care. Let me take that off and show you my t-shirt. Peace love and good music those three things will take us far right so take care love you people <laughs>